Did the president ever call the Secretary of Defense? Did he call the head of DHS? Did he call the National Guard? Did he call the Capitol Police? Uh, and the answer from those individuals, uh, for, from their own knowledge of being in the White House, was that that did not happen. Every time they show the clip from uh, the rally on the Mall, and they ever, mm. whenever they take a clip from President Trump, they always leave out that ending clip of let's march peacefully and patriotically to the Capitol. I mean, if you're at this point, we've seen this tape so many times. Why not just play it? Yeah, we, we all know that that's not what ended up happening. But the fact that they constantly edit it out, I think, reflects poorly on them. They should just play it the way it was, that the president said, we'll march together peacefully and patriotically. Cutting it out, I think, is, is sort of a, a piece of, of silliness at this point. The former president made targets out of his own vice president and lawmakers who do the people's work here at the United States Capitol. The president did fail to uh, carry out the responsibility of his office office to protect uh, his vice president, to seek a uh, peaceful resolution on that day. That delay was a critical delay. Uh, the hearing, however, sounds a lot like impeachment 3.0. We haven't seen a lot of new evidence, certainly not a clear criminal case. Issue is singularly important. This hearing so far, I think, has been underwhelming. I think the ultimate goal is to affect American sentiment when it comes to Donald Trump and uh, many of his key supporters. I thought one of the most important points that was made tonight was that in the immediate aftermath of January 6th, you could not get a Republican to defend the president. And then a couple weeks later, people got over it. And they started going back to Mar-a-Lago and they started soothing his ego again. And they started proliferating the big lie about election fraud that began all of this, which the former president continues to do. I think that having Republican voices almost exclusively as the, the guests that people are testifying is an incredibly important piece of this puzzle. These are people who did not want this to happen. These are people who believed in President Trump. And these are people who were let down from the highest levels by that administration. I do think to trace, which I think there are questions raised about having another side uh, that is uh, an element of this. You've got Cheney and Kinzinger, but they're very much like-minded. You should point out that the September hearings will continue after Liz Cheney's primary, which recent polls suggest that she is trailing significantly in Wyoming, yeah. uh, to a challenger Hagman. backed yeah. by former President Trump. So yeah. Also, Sarah Matthews, yeah. the deputy White House press secretary, saying that this was one of the darkest days in American history, and the president, in her terms, thought it was rather celebratory. Mm -hmm. Back to Chad Pergram on the Hill.